take this left right here and towards that officer right there. You understand me? Yes, sir. Go. It was a little bit more intense. Uh, I thought it was going to be a little bit more relaxed. I've heard from um, you know previous trainees, but um, it was pretty. It was pretty intense. Back in next to this vehicle here. Those faces turn a lot. It was pretty bad. I mean, I, I'm also prior experience, uh, prior military, so I kind of knew what to expect. You know, as far as a lot of yelling. Have your license, registration, insurance card. Listen, stop the car. Did I tell you to keep moving? Look forward. Look forward. When I'm talking to you, you stop. Do you understand that? Go. I always expected the worst when I came here, because it just mentally prepares you to have to do the worst. But for some people, it, it looked like it was a culture shock entirely. Like they definitely were not ready for it. You shaved this morning, sir? Sir, yes, sir. When did you shave? Four o'clock in the morning, sir. Four o'clock in the morning. Yes, sir. You just shave again. You understand that? Sir, yes, sir. During lunchtime, you're gonna shave. Sir, yes, sir. I have no idea what you're saying because your window's up. Sir, my window doesn't work, sir. I suggest you get that fixed. Oh, you only have one week to put your license plate on the bumper? How about you bought the car? Should have went there. Yes, sir. Car, car. Fix this. Fix it. Sir. The line straight. Line it up. I was expecting the worst. I'm going to be honest. I was expecting the worst. So they met my expectations. I, they, yeah, it, it was, it was bad. that you're going into nobody cares about your feelings nobody cares if you had a good day or a bad day you, you walk in there and you have to do your job no matter what else is going on around you so yelling screaming treating you however you want to be treated it is what it is you have to be ready walk forward stay in the line Two cars down from me. And I started there walking to walked up to him, yelled in his face while he's in the car. He just drove off. They did miss an opportunity by walking away like that, but at the same time, this isn't for everyone. It's better for him to make the decision then than for him to waste his time. Like you you should know yourself. From this point forward, no matter what you are doing, when an instructor walks inside of these barracks, you will say, attention on deck, and snap to the position of attention, and stand where you're standing right now. Do you understand that? Sir, yes, sir! Sir, yes, sir! Your goal is to be the end, to be an officer at the end of these 14 weeks. So I want you, each and every one of you, to prepare today for the next day. If you're not ready, let us know, and we will, you know, help you out with the paperwork to move along. But again, it's up to you. You need to work hard. It, it's a real culture shock. Like you, you probably won't get it. You'll probably think everything's all about like, why are they doing this to me? Why are they doing this? They don't need to do this. They kind of have to. It, it's just a different, different way to mold a person. But it's got to be done. You will not be treated unfairly here as long as myself, the director here, and these instructors are here. They are here to see you succeed. However, you have to meet those standards. If you do not meet the standards, you will not walk across the stage. We will give you every opportunity to meet those standards, but you have to do it yourself. Same way you have to do the job for 30 years on your own. 
They send out a video that you watch and you, you study it and you watch it. I think I watched it about 10, 15, 20 times just to make sure I knew exactly what was going on. Sit down! Put your utensils on the track! Put your utensils on the track! Put your utensils on the track! But when you get in there, they try to throw you off from it. So now you're the last one here. You say ready seats! Ready seats! Sit down! I made it into a game, like how much food could I shove in my face in 30 seconds in order to not lose that much weight. Get in front of the chair, man. Get, get, get behind get it. It. So the yelling, the screaming, one guy telling you to go one way, one guy telling you to go another way. You're not really sure. Some people get frozen right there and don't know what, what's about to happen. Sir, which way do I go, sir? Ow! Stop asking questions! Get out of here! There is a certain way they want everything to be done. Everything, from the way you walk to the way you pick up things to the way you sit down. I'm gonna sit down! Stand in front of your chair! Now you send me to the restaurant at the table! Ready? Cease! Say it louder! And if you do it the wrong way, it's there in their face. They can see it. So you will be handled accordingly. Stop! With them screaming at you and they're like hovering over you, you're like, oh my god, and the food is hot, and you're just like, you know what, I'm just not gonna, I'm just gonna keep my head down, not look around, eat as much as I can and get out. Sometime today, we can get out of here! Let's go, hurry up, hurry up, don't mess this up! This is mom's chicken, don't mess it up! Get out, put your covers on! I'm, I'm the type of person I like to just relax while I eat. As you uh, get to the institution, you know, if something goes on and code 33 pops up, you know, you got to be prepared just to put your food down and start running to the code, and it, it's all for a reason. Well, DNC brings a sort of a military bearing. It builds upon discipline, you know, um, paying attention, um, making sure that you're working as a team so that you look good as a platoon. Left face. Everyone has to move in unison. Everyone has to listen and act accordingly. They listen to the commands, and that teaches you how to move as a unit, how to work as how to work as a team. It's hard to work as a team if you're only thinking about yourself. You need to, you need to, you need to gel together. You need to stop thinking only about how it affects you and how how you act and how everyone else acts affects the team. Drill and ceremony, if you've never done it before, it's a completely, completely strange being. Um, there's some people that know it, there, there's military and ex-military, and those are some people that you could actually lean on a little bit and ask them questions after the fact. We practice DNC in the barracks after we learn certain moves, um, even basic moves. Day one, we did the basic, basic things, facing movements, marching, just making sure we're all staying in step. And then they build upon it. It's just building blocks bringing you up to where you learn complex maneuvers and then trick drill. And then you work on your different drill and ceremony for family day. And then you continue to do it all the way through because at graduation, we have to do drill and ceremony at graduation. So it all revolves around building a team and working as a team and being one cohesive unit. They fell in the chapel. They they fell. As the weeks gone by, it's like you, you really make this bond and like you're marching together and it, it just feels good. You know, you, you, you get real proud of these guys. Like you're like, you know, I'm proud of you. You guys came a long way. You know, it, it's a lot. It means a lot. Running, we ran a lot here, like six to eight miles every other day. I was used to doing like a mile or two at my own pace but here is at the instructor's pace and we're just going a lot round and round and round secret. If you have time to prepare, just prepare yourself. You know, you want to be in the right shape to come in here. You don't want to come in here and expecting to just 
fly by and not do nothing because here they work you. They work you here, they, they expect you to know what you're doing. Just being in physically good shape is always a plus because at the end of the day, you don't like you could probably not go home and so could your partner. It sucks because they probably have a family and you definitely got a family and you want to see them. So being able to to get there and help out if you need to is it's definitely held close to my heart. PT was was heavy. This is this was I don't want to say it was harder than the army, but it was most definitely something that I would stack up next to it. You have to make sure that you're ready and you're prepared when you come from PT. If you're not ready, you'll be weeded out and you'll be shown that you're not ready. And you either have to one, become ready very, very fast, or two, you're, you're leaving, you're not gonna stay here. Um, I'd like to present to Director Irvin. Your support has given athletes a chance to learn, grow, and know the joy of sports and athletic competition through participation in Special Olympics. I personally would like to thank the Academy and all the staff that worked so hard to get you guys where you're at and uh, bring you guys out here today to share this with us. So I really appreciate it. I hope to see all of you again in the future. And uh, good luck to everybody as you uh, move forward in your careers. Thank you. When you're in the circle with, with the instructors, you you automatically get tunnel vision. You focus on the person in front of you. You forget that there's more instructors around you, so you have to be conscious. That you got to constantly move move your feet and look around and just be aware of your surroundings. The thing I liked about it though is it's kind of like being in a dojo, where like they teach you a move and they send you back on the mats and you're you're rolling around and you're learning the move for like I would say at least. 20 minutes each each move so you're definitely getting being able to like feel out how your body position should be especially with different variations of a human being just absorb everything they're teaching you because at the end of the day you're going to need that stuff when you work in the institution And when they say raise your hand if you've ever been punched in the face, I think maybe three or four hands came up in the room. The ones that had their hands down, the instructor said, well, don't worry about it because you're going to be punched in the face thousands of times over the next 10 days or so. So that'll, that'll change. What do you do? What do you do? Go, go, go. circle and you're looking around there's that there's a oh my goodness back there <laughs>
experiencing what I experienced, it makes you want to train all the more because you realize that it's, it's real. It's, it's, it's real. You could be in that situation one day and I want to live. Ranger's a lot different than I expected. You know, I'm used to, in the military, shooting the M9. And when I got here, the double action trigger was a lot different than I expected. You know, in the beginning, I was struggling a lot. And a lot of pressure started coming to my head, like, wow, like, you know, if I don't get my stuff together, this is gonna be a problem, they're gonna send me home. The week prior to us going to the range, I feel like everyone was, you know, nervous. Like, we did the PTSS, all right, we passed it, but now it's the range, you know. If you fail the range, you're, you're going home, and you know, you put in all this time. The wrench can be a bit daunting for those who've never fired a firearm before because um, it's your first time firing a firearm and then I don't know what type of stigmas individuals have towards that, but it, it can be a bit daunting, it can be a bit scary. But once everyone did it, because you will do it a lot, <laughs> the repetition kind of makes you more acclimated to it and you're like, oh, okay, it's not as scary as I thought. It was definitely a learning curve, but the instructors are excellent. They did a great job of teaching you, explaining things. And they even say that if you've never shot before, you're actually the best person to work with because you have no bad habits. So you develop your good habits from, from scratch right from there. And they do an excellent job teaching you. And I'm thankful to say I'm still here. So I, I did a pretty good job. We now know at least 100 people were wounded in that shooting. And at least 20 people were killed, including two off-duty police officers who were at that concert. I do feel like, as, as far as uh, the, the shootings that happen, such as like Las Vegas and all the other active shootings, I do feel like I am well more equipped to handle uh, things of that nature than I was when I first got here. Open the right, stack on me. From everything they teach you, from how to walk to how to hold your weapon, you know, there's a different way you hold your weapon when you're going into to a situation like that. If it came down to an active shooter and, you know, something going on, you know, I, I would do what I had to do to protect whoever's around me. Hold on. Everything becomes muscle memory at that time. Every rep you have pulling your gun out of your holster, whatever it was, it's muscle memory. So if you have to save for, say, six lives, you could count on the training you had because it was good training. And no matter what, you'll always remember it because it was, it was a fun time doing it and you're retaining the knowledge because it was knowledge that you know you're going to have to use. Being now the first class graduating as correctional police officers, you can be prepared to at any time, whether you're on duty or even off duty, be able to respond to a situation and hopefully alleviate any problems before they do come. We have class every day. There's exams every week, and they're they're pretty serious. If you're not a strong um, learner, I would say spend most of your time in the barracks studying. Academics is a lot harder than I thought it would be. You know, you really have to put time into the books, really go over your powerpoints, and really study the material. Because if you just think, oh, like it's gonna be alright, I'll pass. It's not that hard. It's, you're not gonna pass. You really gotta put time into the books. You're sitting in class for six hours straight and you're you're either looking at the notes, reading the notes, answering questions, or you're doing push-ups. You're either gonna get smarter or stronger. You're getting graded on your performance on the test. It's not just like you take the test and if you fail, you fail. If you take the test, you're getting remediated and you're taking the test again. So you can't run from it. You gotta pass that test. It's either you're, you're in class studying, you're doing PT, or you're doing some of detail, or you're studying at, in, at, in the barracks for the test you have the next day. Because it's, it, it's, it's a very aggressive schedule as far as the academics. It, with, with, with reason though, because there's a lot that we need to know. Marching down the avenue, one by one, two by two, one by one, two by two, four more weeks will be through, four more weeks will be through, I'll be glad so are you, I'll be glad so are you. I always wanted to be a correctional officer because my father was a correctional officer. Um, my dad's a very squared away man. 
you know, everything when it comes down to his uniform, his boots, how he looks, his hair. And he's always been, my dad's the type of guy, he's always been on top of things, you know, he's always been squared away. Always coming to work 30 minutes early, 45 minutes early, you know, that just, he just shows that he loved this job, you know, he would do anything for this job. Having your family be able to see you here in the uniform, out there marching, it, it definitely shows them, it brings it to life for them because just thinking in their own minds, you don't know what they're picturing. So bringing it to life for them, it makes it more real for them too. And then they further understand what you're actually doing and going through. It, it's the soul to the officer because if you want to be the officer you want to be, you got to be able to be yourself because I'm, I didn't even get into an institution yet and I know that 30 years of locking yourself up with inmates is going to be tough. And to be able to go home and have people push you in the, in the right direction and keep you alive and keep you happy, especially doing the things you love, if you have kids, seeing your kids happy, it's a lot. It, 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 it makes the human thrive. through this academy is pretty tough. Um, it's important to have a support system, you know, somebody that you can go home to or somebody that you can talk to outside of here, somebody who's not a trainee, that you can be like, you know, I need a push this week. You know, I need a reason to keep on going. So, yeah, my, my best friend helped me out. Help, I've called her many times, Friday nights, Saturday nights, even Sunday nights when I have to come back on Monday, I'm just like, dude, is this really what I want to do? And she's like, go for it. Just keep on pushing. You're almost done. A few more weeks left. You got this. I have a little sister. I'm trying to give her something to look up to, something to try to be better than. There's a lot of things out there that can uh, influence her. I want, I want to be one of the things that makes her go in the right direction. And as far as my parents, my mother and my father, I want to be something that they're proud of, all the work and energy they put into me. I don't want my life to go to waste. So seeing them there and seeing them support me, it, it really brings home why I'm here and who I am as an individual. It feels great, you know. My dad's very proud of me. It's, it's an honor, honestly, you know, to, to carry on the footsteps. And from everything, from joining the military like my father, and now I'm in the corrections like my dad. It's, it's honestly like a dream come true. My team is ready. Get a little closer together. You have to really trust your team members. You know, um, everyone has to know their own position. You know, you, we rehearsed it a few times before we went into the cell. And um, you just gotta remember your, remember your job and trust your team members to do their job. You gotta really count on the person who has to do a certain position to do their job. Otherwise, that inmate can get up and do whatever he wants. Run around, jump up and down, and you still gotta tackle him until he's secured, that's when that's when you got that's when you're done going in there you have your plan but it's a very dynamic situation things change and one role might not need to have to switch into another role and one person might have to take over for another person you have to maybe be somewhere else so being able to know what you have to do where you have to be and then silently communicate with your partners and work as a team and accomplish your goal during that cell extraction is, is huge and they prepare us very very well for that we do a, a lot of repetitions with it and they they make sure that we have it and we know exactly what's going to happen Hey, 
Now some of you can still grab this ball. Red, 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 red. All right. Stay, stay where you are. There are those who try to focus on it as individuals, and they try to just run in and individually do their thing, and they they didn't do as well. And then there was those who looked each other, look at each other, had each other's back, and they went in as a team, and they went about it as a team, and you saw that they were a lot more successful in their tasks. This is here, this is working with the instructors. I'm, I'm, I bet working in the institution is a hundred times more stressful than it is here. So you just, honestly, you just gotta make sure you have your head on right and, you know, just push through. Once we pulled up to the to the institution, it, that's when the, when it hits you, you're like, man, you know, this is it, this is my career. This is it for the next 30 years until I retire. Searching the cells is extremely important to the safety of the officers, the safety of the institution, we found a number of items. It was in the garbage. What I found was a razor blade. It looks like it was torn off a face shaving razor and it was taped under the bathroom uh, sink. We had a couple people find shanks, which is pretty awesome because once one person finds something, everyone's like, all right, we need to get this stuff because People are finding stuff left and right. You're just like, well, what am I gonna find? And I want to write a special. We went in there, and I was. You automatically feel claustrophobic. It's just things everywhere, documents everywhere. It's very, it's a lot smaller than what I was expecting. I had one of my guys from my platoon find a, a shank, a nice, nice little shank. What? It was a piece of metal wrapped around with uh, inmate, the clothing from the inmate. But it feels good finding something in the cells because you know you, you you never know like working in the institution you don't know what that guy wanted to use that shank for it could have been to take a, an officer's life take an inmate's life you know it's just dangerous working in facilities you know you, you try to find anything that they make anything that they hide it makes you feel good when you find it because you know that you made that you made the prison a lot safer for the inmates and for yourself that moment where you found that knife you you might have saved someone's life Open your eyes, open your eyes, open your eyes. Doing OC and you ask around and you ask people about OC and they all say it is the worst day of the academy. Open your eyes, open your eyes, take something, let's go. Go 33 behind building 21 at the CSTA. It was a lot, it was a lot when you got stuff burning your, uh, your cornea. Hurry up, your partner needs assistance. I'm trying to get this key open and it just wasn't opening. So right after the keys, it was, it was in full effect so I had to go run to the dummy. I had to perform the strikes, then the baton. Side to side. Let's go. This is on you. This is on you, sir. Let's go. Keep going. And then you got a cuff. It's very, very important to know the effects that it has on number one, you, because you're going to be around OC. So knowing how it affects you is very important because when it happens, which we're told it probably will happen that you know how to control yourself and it's not such a surprise. Open your eyes, take the keys, open the middle lock. Stop moving around crazy like this. Let's go! Let's go! What are you waiting for? You only has one arm! All you have to do is hang up and get out of here, sir! Open your eyes, middle lock. You have to open your eyes in order to see, sir. Open your eyes, middle lock, that's not middle. You have to just maintain your bearing. It, it, even though it sucks and you, you barely can keep your eyes open, you know, you just have to keep on pushing and get the mission done. Let's go, so forward and forward. Stop the back! Stop the back! Stop the back! Good. Good. Next station. Tell him what's doing his life! Put your legs to your butt. Host her up! Host her up! No, you host her up, not him! You guys have a weapon! You don't want to give up because if you're in an institution, and you happen to get OC'd and your buddy next to you is getting beat up, you know, you still have to do what you gotta do. So his, he could go home and see his family and you could go home and see your family. Stop. All right guys, congratulations on making it up to this point, okay? Uh, remember the sacrifices that it took for you to get here, especially from your loved ones. Honor their sacrifices. How do you do that? Wear the uniform right. Show up to work. Show up to work and be able to perform, okay? Last thing I'll leave you is a test score brought you here to see her. Courage will get you to walk across the stage. Nice to 43, dear spirit. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Jesus. Say it again. Woo! Oh, my God.
All right, good luck now, Thank okay? You. Thank you, sir. Best stay out of trouble, all right? Thank you, okay? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. flies we were just talking about it in the barracks we we're like man we were just I remember day one we were just getting yelled at by instructor Kyle you know with our bags running to the female barracks and we we're like no way we're not gonna you know make it and then now that we're here it's just like wow you know we really we really pushed through we're here They said in the very beginning that you will not be given anything, you will earn everything that you got. And I can say that no one here just was given anything. They've worked for it. All the all the all the pride, all the energy, all the expectations placed upon me, I want to meet those and succeed them. Like I'm actually gonna be a corrections officer, which I wanted to do throughout high school, which is crazy because it's here. So I graduated, I'm in the academy, now I'm here. So it's actually crazy that it's it's finally here and I can finally do the job that I've been looking forward to do. We will have so much of you. The circumstances in which you will find yourself are changing rapidly, and you will be asked.